Hey guys, welcome to another walkthrough. So let's start with uh, a new project and I set it to 30 frames per second. Not absolutely necessary, but uh, the animation is 90 frames long. So if you have got, you know, a 30 frames per second timeline, then it will be three seconds long. Nice and easy. So we'll drag in a new fusion composition and control D and we'll set it to three seconds. There we go. And then we go into the Fusion tab. And once we're there, we'll go into the file import. And then you will need to navigate to wherever you downloaded the template and you open it up. And there we go. And the first thing I will do is add back the media out. There we go. And then we'll display that. And it's all working. So here, depending on the power of your graphics art and such, uh, it may take a bit. And here you go, it's up and running. You've got a recursive zoom. So what makes this tick? So essentially, it's a text, well, in this case, a text node, but it could be any image file going into a resize to make it a bit more manageable and then going into a particle system. Now, uh, here you can see what's going on. It's just one big, massive plane of particles. Now, some of you may think, well, I could have used a P image emitter, and it is possible, but I found some downsides. I won't go into the reasons here, into the details. Uh, so I went, I opted for a P custom and such, but not important for this walkthrough. So the important thing is, of course, what can you do with it? So, um, first of all, you can see the text here. You can easily change it to whatever you like. And there we go. And show it again. And it works. All right. And what I also included is some different movements. So it is all governed by a camera 3D. And that's being animated with a transform 3D, which I renamed here. So if, if for instance, I pop in another one here and play that and let it go through a bit and play it again. This is a kind of a cool animation. So it's just a camera movement. So if you want to create your own one, be my guest, right? Please do so. Let me show you here how it works. So here in the spline editor, I'm showing this particular movement. It's just really a Z offset or Z offset that I'm animating. And you can really change the movement, the speed and such by just changing the handles. But of course you can set up your own camera, your own transform, etc. right? So it's really, really easy. But as I said, to get you started, you know, I included a few little presets. So I'm just adding back the original here and there we go. Um, so the other thing of note here is, uh, let me just take this back to the beginning. You see here, the color is a bit different. So this is the bitmap, right? Uh, of the actual text and the background. And you can see here, the actual output is a bit darker. Well, the reason is that all these individual pixels are made out of the individual uh, image, right? So if the image has got darker elements in it, the overall picture will get darker. So in this particular case, it works, but there may be cases where it becomes too dark. What you can do then is basically add in a brightness contrast or a color corrector just after the renderer 3D. I will show you an example in a moment. Well, as a matter of fact, I'll show you right now. So let me show you um, one example here. So I'm dragging in uh, one of the assets. It's a picture from Pexels. And um, of course, this type of ratio could work, but this template has been set up for a typical HD ratio, HD widescreen ratio. So what I'll do here is add in a crop node and display that as well in viewport one. Of course, uh, we don't want to see the back of this person's head. Well, you may want to, but I don't want to. So what we'll do is change the Y offset, change it a bit more, maybe to something like 2000. There we go. And get it to the middle and there we go. So if I now pop this one out and pop this one in, then we can see the result, right? So this all works. 
but it's a bit dark right and that's what I meant earlier on um, so what you can do then is after here add in a brightness contrast up to gamma a bit up to contrast a bit there you go that already looks a lot better so if we now play through it actually let's change this to a zoom in rotate and let's see the result of that so that's looking pretty good all right so um, really that's all there is uh, to the template as such but how would you use this right so um, what you can do now is go back to the edit tab and there you see your animation works in the same way now what you could do is just you know copy this over again and again and again and then you've got an infinite loop however each time it will, will recalculate that so what I tend to do is just render it out right and then bring it back in and then loop it um, you may have seen or you may have spotted the very last example in the intro that was a very funky sort of psychedelic type of thing and what I did there was I fed in the result of the loop right or the actual loop I fed it back in as an image because here it is actually not restricted to a static image file it works with video files as well so I took one of the elements I looped it out brought it back in as a video and did it again and then you get the, the sort of ultimate recursive result um, yeah so if you guys have got any questions let me know in the meantime I hope you enjoyed this please download it and if you do something cool with it let me know drop me a link and then in the meantime have a good time take care bye bye